So greetings from a rather noisy Pennsylvania. No, my camera is not malfunctioning. You hear that, just that ongoing drone of insect noise. Those are the cicadas. Brood X. They're here. And there's one even here caught in like a spider web. You can see him there. I'll try to let him loose, I think. Let's get him over here. Let's see if we see what they look like. Should we let you loose, buddy? The spider web. Oh, there he goes. Yep, down there he is. The periodical cicada. They can be a bit freaky looking with those big red eyes, black bodies, but they're actually harmless. They don't bite or anything. Yes, yeah, so I'm at a location here in Pennsylvania called Middle Creek Wildlife Management Area. I come here pretty often at times. This is in Lancaster and Lebanon County. Although it's usually not this noisy. And if you're from the East Coast and you've been paying attention to the news, you should know about Brood X. Of course, these are the periodical cicadas, or often referred to as the 17-year cicadas. They are loud. Um, and there's different types of cicadas. There are cicadas that come up every year here in the East. They're called annual cicadas, or sometimes they go by different names, like dog day cicadas. They're more blackish and greenish with like white bellies. I'll show you a picture of them. I think I'll throw a pic up of what they look like. But those annual cicadas have not emerged yet. They come up every summer, usually a little bit later in the summer, July and August. But as their name suggests, the periodical, the 17 year cicadas come up every 17 years. Not all at the same time though. There are different broods, like this is brood X. So we'll keep our eyes open for some more of these things. Yeah, just a constant, that's the males, that droning sound you hear. Of course, individually, they don't sound like that, but when you have millions of them all making that noise at one time, this is what it sounds like. Of course, they're trying to attract females. Imagine if you're a female, listening to a chorus of millions of men singing, trying to attract you. I'm having to pick one. <laughs> right, so I just found another one, probably newly emerged. Making its way to the top of the trees. Long way to go. If it's a male, he's going to go up there and join the others in song. And we'll keep an eye open for their husks that they leave behind too. That's the adult form. When they first come up out of the ground, they're still in their nymph form. They don't have wings or anything. But then they do one final molting as a nymph and they come out as an adult and they leave their exoskeleton or like a little husk behind on the sides of the trees. Kind of, kind of cool to find. Yeah, so down here just off trail is an example of one of the husks that they leave behind. Can zoom in on it there for you a little bit. What's the focus? There you go. That's what they look like. Pick it off the tree there. Yep, you can see it's, it's empty. That's where it split open on the back. And the adult form crawled out. And 
And where did this little guy come from? Well, he came from the ground. So somewhere around here is, will be a hole where he crawled out of. Climbed up to here, molted out, and then continued up as an adult or flew off. So what are they doing down there in the ground for 17 years? Let's talk about that. Yes, yeah, so they spend 17 years of their life underground as little nymphs. Um, like, the adults are up there getting rid of mate and stuff. The females will lay eggs in the tips of the branches. And then the, the young will hatch and eventually fall to the ground, where they will burrow into the soil, attach themselves to tree roots, and spend the next 17 years sucking the sap of the juice from the tree roots. But over time, they will grow and molt and get bigger and bigger as nymphs until 17 years later they come out as adults. And why does it work that way? Why spend 17 years underground? Why not just come up every year? Well, if you remember I mentioned at the beginning there are cicadas that do come up every year. But they don't come out in the numbers like these do. Like dude, there's millions of these out right now. So if if this number or this amount came out every year it would do a lot of damage to the trees. Because during, during a periodical cicada year, like I said, the females lay eggs in the tips of the branches, and the tips of the branches all die. You'll see branches or trees with the tips all brown and dead. That's because that's where they laid eggs, because they actually pierce the bark to lay their eggs. So if they did that every year, it would just be a bit destructive to the forests. So there's a balance in nature. You only come out every 17 years. But there are different broods of 17-year cicadas. They, all, they don't all just come out the same series of 17 years. Like this is Brood X. Um, back in 2013, Brood 2 hatched in this area of Pennsylvania, or a little bit further north. So there are different broods. They don't all hatch the same year. I think there's another brood that's hatching in 2023 in part of Pennsylvania, a smaller one. Some of the broods are smaller, some are larger. So how do you get the different broods? Well, we'll talk about that too. Oh, and not all of them are 17-year cicadas. Some are 13-year cicadas. I think those are more in the south. It's pretty interesting. All right, let's look for some more. And I'll talk more cicada nerdiness with you in a little bit later. Let's see if we can find some more of these adults. Yeah, here's another one of those husks, you can call them. I took a picture on Instagram having some of these stuck to my beard. Whoops, I lost that one. And they can be a bit clumsy when they first emerge and molt into adults and first start flying. They can, they'll fly into you or land on you. Oh look, down here you can see the holes where they emerge from. Be all these, be all over the forest floor. But yeah, they'll, they'll land on you, the cars. It can be kind of freaky, but they're harmless. But, oh wait a second, I think I see one. Oh, what's this? That's just part of one. <laughs> yep, they end up as food too, for a lot of critters. All right. And as I was saying, they can be a bit clumsy. Um, and if you're driving through an area where they're emerging, man, like uh, last week I was coming home from West Virginia and I was in the Maybe just north of Winchester, Virginia, coming up through that little section of West Virginia and Maryland. Man, they were just flying across the road, slamming into my Jeep, into the windshield, into the grill. And when they hit, man, they make a noise. My windshield was splattered with, you know, cicada guts. I had to give her a good washing when I got home. They were stuck in the grill, the Jeep. So, it's like, it's kind of nuts. I've seen other people, you know, Facebook memes about that happening. First, I didn't know what was happening. I just hear like things slamming into my windshield. And as I'm driving, I can see them like flying around. Yeah, and as you're walking along, you start to get a little bit used to the to the noise. Because my first got here was almost deafening. But you're I guess your ears and your brain get somewhat used to it. I often wonder what the Native Americans thought of these, or like when the colonists first came over from Europe, you know, 
like I said, this doesn't happen every year, and all of a sudden this happens. You know, it's like almost like a biblical plague of locusts or something. You can't eat them. <laughs> I haven't tried one yet, though. Probably gonna eat lunch up here. I'm on the Valley View Trail, if you're familiar with Middle Creek. So coming, making my way up to the top of the mountain here. All right, made it to the top. Nice place to have lunch. My ears are absolutely ringing with that sound. Wow. There's millions of them up there. <laughs> Alright, we'll eat lunch while being serenaded by the cicadas. Like I said, uh, we'll talk, get a little bit more nerdy about them too in a bit. Seems like they're getting louder up here. But yeah, just a couple of my of f former students of mine just came up the trail here, talked for a little bit. I knew they were my students right away because they said, you know, they called out, hey, Mr. Zeller. My, my, if I run into my viewers, they don't call me that. Yeah, they call me Cliff or uh, the Wandering Woodsman, so. Only, only, a, only a certain group of people out there call me Mr. Zeller. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, they were kind of wondering what was going on here, too. She, she, she said it almost sounds like an emergency is going on, like the sirens, because that's what it sounds like. Like emergency sirens going off. It's just loud up here. That's pretty cool too. All right, I'm gonna finish eating lunch up here and then we'll get get walking again and talk a little bit more about these cicadas and hopefully we'll find a little bit more of them. I'd like to find some more of the adults flying around. All right, All right so lunch is consumed. Of course the trail comes up from that way and we'll just uh, continue on up this way. I have hiked this trail a number of times in the past. So I think it'll, it'll take us back down and loop back to the Jeep. But here, you can see more of these holes. All these holes where the cicadas emerged from. All over the place. Yeah, it's kind of fun talking with my students there uh, about the cicadas and stuff. I always mention, I think I mentioned it in a previous video. I was talking to some of my students and we are talking about making a movie about the cicadas. You know, Day of the Cicada. It'd be like a horror movie where you know, this is where the cicadas aren't quite so harmless, where they have a, you know, a taste for human flesh, I guess you could say. And you're out here, you see some hikers running towards you and they're just covered in cicadas. And, I don't know. <laughs> Might make a good movie. Or maybe not. You hear some more of those husks. There's one right there. I'm up the side here. And here's where the Valley View Trail gets its name. I don't know if you can make it on camera, but there's, there are insect, there, the cicadas are flying around in the trees here. I'm not sure if they're showing up on camera, but even down there, I can see them flying around everywhere. All right, so let's walk around a little bit here because I see a number of interesting cicada things here. Here's another one of those the husks that they molt out of to leave behind. I think I see an adult. Oh, I thought I saw an adult up here somewhere. Oh, here's one. Yeah, right here is. Oh, there's, there's several of them. Check them out. There's one over there. That's a pretty cool picture right there. Yeah, so down there's where our adults were. And underneath them, you can see more of those, the husks that they leave, they leave behind. So that, you know, they may have just emerged from those down there. Yeah, they're all over this little tree. Yeah, there's another one just flew in over there. Oh yeah, they're everywhere. Here's one right here. Here's another adult. Oops. I don't want to focus on him so well there. There we go. Oh, he's waving at us. 
Yeah, so we were just looking at that one, and then I just looked up in the tree, this little bush over here, and man, there's two more. One right there, and one right next to it. Yeah, so those two are right there. And we got another adult posing for us right on top of here. There's a cool shot of him. Just chilling out. Yeah, so if you're from the area and you want to come see these cicadas, and they're right here at this view on the Valley View Trail. I mean, right here are the, the benches you can sit on. And they're, they're just everywhere in here. Easy to spot and see. Once again, you can see the holes everywhere where they emerged from. And they're just chilling out. I mean, there's, like, here's more of those, the husks. They're everywhere. All right, well, we will move on from that spot. That worked out pretty well. I was hoping to get some more close-up shots of them. And right there they were. Because most of them were up in the trees, but that little clearing there, they were on the smaller trees. So that's pretty awesome. All right, let's keep going. So as I mentioned before, there are different broods of these periodical cicadas. They don't all come up the same year. Remember they come up every 17 or 13 years. So they don't all come up in 2021. There's different broods. Like this is Brood X or Brood 10. And uh, back in 2013, Brood 2 emerged. So why don't they all come up at once? Well, that would just be a little bit too much. It would be kind of dangerous for them too because, you know, something catastrophic happened here in 2021 and most of them died. Then, you know, whole species become extinct so they they don't all come up the same year they're kind of staggered in that way you know how is it that you get the different broods what caused them to not all come up the same year but for some to come up for in one area to come up you know, one year and then another brood of 17 year cicadas come up you know two years later in another area well what's interesting is they're called 17 year cicadas, but they don't always follow the rule, apparently. I was reading a little bit this morning. Um, and some 17 year cicadas, 17 year cicadas will come up, I guess, common sometimes for some to come up four years later, four years earlier than they're supposed to. And if enough of them do that, they'll form a new brood or a new colony. So that's how that can happen. Like I said, there are some 13 year cicadas that do that all the time. And apparently, some 13 year cicadas will stay in the ground four years longer than normal it might form a new brood. If only a, a handful come up four years early um, it's not enough to start a new brood but if enough of them do and they're still learning about these cicadas and what causes them to do stuff like that that's probably one way you get these different broods and sadly though some of the, some of the broods are extinct um, I think they, oh, they they go up in the 20s or maybe up to 30 different broods but some are extinct Probably because of develop, development, development in certain areas where they used to live. Because you got to consider, you know, they, they, they feed on the tree roots. So they need, they're in the ground for 17 years. So if while they're in the ground, the forest, the roots that they live off are cut down. Like an area is logged over and developed, those trees are dead then. And so will the roots be, and then they, their food supply is cut off. So all those millions of cicadas of that brood that's it for them they're not going to emerge they're done for so some broods are extinct because of things like that
these cicadas or not, it's a beautiful hike up here today. Oh, there's a there's a Sasquatch home in there. <laughs> Beautiful June day, Saturday afternoon here. Nice cooler day. Got a butterfly over there. Yeah, so after this year, the next time I'll see any of these is potentially in, I forget what year it is, 2023 or 2025. I was just looking at the chart before I came. But in central PA, in a small area in central PA, there'll be a brood that emerges. Some of the broods are larger than others. If you just go online, if you want to see if there's, if you want to see if there's any going to be in your area, or when they might be in your area, just type in, you know, cicada broods, and, and do an image search. Look for a map, or type in cicada map, or cicada brood map, and you'll get a cute, nice little, cute. It almost looks like a, in a picture of the U.S. It looks like a jigsaw puzzle with all the different colors. Each brood has a different color, and they show you where it's like color coded and, and the years, the next year that they'll emerge. If you are interested in when or if they might come to your area or emerge in your area, yeah, I'm coming off the mountain now, and they're still, they're still everywhere. Like right here's, right there's one of their husks. There's one right behind it. There's one right here. And right here is one of the adults, kind of chilling out in the branch there. And then uh, down here's another adult. It looks like we have a newly emerged one right here. See how its wings are still kind of uh, not fully spread out. Let me zoom in. Yeah, there's the adult with the wings all spread out, and then the one next to it looks like its wings haven't fully. Um, expanded yet. So something non-cicada related, but these are pretty cool. I haven't seen any of these for a while. I don't think I've ever seen these here at Middle Creek, but these are Indian pipe plants. That's the flower right there. They are a non-photosynthetic plant, so that's why they're white. All right, pretty cool though. Yeah, so just walking along the road back to the Jeep. And they're all over the road here, too. Where are you? This one does not have a head. Okay. Um, he got smushed. <laughs> he got smushed. Smushed. So. This one does not have a head, either. Oh, yeah, he does. I guess that one's... Oh, there he is. Not sure what's wrong with him. It's not looking too good, though. So they also, they have a high uh, morbidity rate too. And they get eaten a lot. I mean, this is a, this is a bumper year for animals that eat insects and stuff. Because later on in the summer, all these millions of cicadas start dying. You know, after they're done mating and laying eggs, you know, that's it. They start dying. All right, it ended up being a pretty awesome day to come out here and film them weather-wise. And they're, they're definitely out here. So yeah, I mean, if they're out in your area, definitely go out and see them because they will not be in your area for another 17 years unless another brood hatches nearby. Like that's the way it is here. Like I said, back in 2013, brood two hatched. Actually, that was the last year I lived on my farm before I had to move and they, they were up that way. But brood two is not down this way near Middle Creek. So, all right, but yeah, like I said, if they're out in your area, go check them out. At least, at least you can say you look at them. All right, all right. I'm gonna head home. As always, thanks for coming along, and I'll see you around.